secrets locked away from us in a vault, never to see the light of day, things that we will never know from just watching the edited show put in front of us on television. Thankfully for us today, the official DVD and Blu-ray releases of each season of Survivor contain quite a lot of secrets that you would never know about from just watching the television show, and that is what this video will be diving into today, as some of these secrets are game related, some are personal thoughts, some are just plain silly, and we will hear from Jeff Probst about how old you need to be to be considered an old lady by his standards on the show. Uh, heads up, it's a lot younger than you think. As long as it isn't part of the show aired on television, it is fair game to be considered a secret, and while most of the secrets here are focused on season 25, Philippines, some of them do apply to Survivor as a whole. So with that, I want to thank you for watching what I make and ultimately supporting what I do here with liking, commenting, and sharing. For only a few bucks a month on Patreon, you can pick what videos I make, watch all this channel's content early, chat with other fans of the show, and even get exclusive videos every month. Thank you for your support. To be clear, there is so much good stuff locked away in these extra features, and it's a lot, and to feature every single thing will be far too much for just one video. So I do recommend you watching them in full for yourself. However, this list contains the secrets that I personally found to be the most interesting. So with that, let's count all 45 of them in absolutely no particular order. 39 days, 18 people, one, survive. Number one. As you may or may not recall, Survivor has not been in Asia since season 15, China. So this move in season 25 to go to the Philippines is a bit exciting after we just spent six seasons just flip-flopping between Samoa and Nicaragua. But the real question is, what made Jeff pick the Philippines? We're in the Philippines, and this is really a spectacular place. And it is kind of amazing we've never shot here. It's really isolated. And I think you get the feeling that it's remote. And I always love when we have these big shots that remind you, no, we really are in the middle of nowhere. Underwater challenges, great fishing opportunities, tribes are gonna be in and out of the water because the water is safe, you can go in it. Number two, personally, I think the choices of Russell Swan and Scoopin returning for this season made sense in 2012. When Survivor was looking to pick three medical evacuees to play again, it adds up. But why Jonathan Penner? If anything, I would think James Clement would be a prime candidate since he has been injured twice, but here is why Penner got his shot to return. So when the idea came up of three tribes and we thought let's have returnees again what variations do we have in threes and the one that really stood out was evacuees they were pulled from the game because they played too hard so let's bring them back and that was exciting it was exciting to everybody the minute we heard it it wasn't hard to pick our three I could lie and tell you it, was, it wasn't. I said, I am too busy and I am too old, but I actually think I can win this time. And they said, you know, what about your knee? Are you okay? And I said, actually, I am. You know, it was, it was rough there, but that's four and a half years ago, you know. Uh, my knees have gone anyway, but not because of the injury, just because I'm an old coot now. Penner, great character still want him to get a shot to play this game. Number three, Russell Swan had no idea about how bad his medical evacuation was in Samoa until he saw it on television. And that makes sense since being in the moment is definitely different than from a comfortable seat at home watching something like this happen. But how he got back on the show is pretty simple. I knew I had been knocked out because I felt myself hit my back. And the next thing I remember is I'm in a van and they're saying you're out of the game. But it wasn't until they aired that episode that I got what these folks were talking about. He saw the medical team come in and have to bring him back. And he called me up and he said, oh my God, I didn't realize how bad it was. Can I go again? Number four, as you may or may not know, Russell Swan has a YouTube channel documenting his journey to becoming a pilot. And I have personally been a fan for a couple of years now. In fact, he even gave me a subscriber shout out back in the day when I had a mere 1100 subscribers. His energy is infectious and I highly recommend you go and subscribe to him and tell him I sent you. The link to his channel is in the description and here is his explanation of how Survivor inspired his channel. And I will say that Survivor was one of those situations where it definitely inspired this endeavor. After doing that and even all that happened, I feel like there's 
really nothing I can't do. And so when I thought about becoming a pilot, probably prior to that experience, I might not have really taken myself seriously in terms of really doing this endeavor. But after that and surviving, no pun intended, all of that, um, I have no problem getting myself up in an airplane. What's going on, good people? Welcome to Russ Can't Fly. Whoop, there it is. Number five. As you may or may not know, Scoopin' was the man everyone thought would come back one day. After falling in the fire in season two, many fans wondered when he would get his second shot. Well, it finally happened 23 seasons later, and some would argue it shouldn't have happened at all, but that is for another time. What is strange here is how Scoopin' is able to call his shot on how he would play this season. Scoopin' was a no-brainer because he's the most iconic evacuation ever in the history of any reality show. I'm determined to keep the streak alive of returning players making it to the end. Number six, Zane, Zane, Zane. When people talk first boot seasons, they always bring up Zane and how he should definitely be cast again, and I get it. Dude is fun. Heck, even Jeff Probst loves him, and I love how so overconfident Zane was going into the season. Zane, I love. I wish we had a guy like Zane on every season. I told him, I said, you put me on this show, I guarantee you I take that money to the house. Cause ain't nobody else want it like I do. Ain't nobody else working for that money every day like I do. And seeing by the competition that y'all got me lined up against, I can already tell it ain't gonna be too hard. I hope that people don't judge a book by its cover and vote him out because they think he's different. Number seven. Angie, on the other hand, is not as beloved, but she is memed, for lack of a better word. Her infamous line about the tribe needing cookies at Tribal Council will live on in infamy. But before the game ever begins, we learn that Angie is recruited, obviously. But Jeff's assessment of her is harder to watch knowing that she has little idea how to play this game. This is hard to say because I think Angie's a really nice young woman, and she's got a great little heart. She has no business being out here. If survivors played the way I would play it, I'd say, Angie, you're beautiful and your tan is amazing. You've got to go. Number eight. Before doing these secrets videos and really researching how this show is made, I always assumed there was fewer people working on the show than what actually is the truth. For example, they use so, so many boats. I'm in charge of getting all the people over here, transportation from the airport, coming to location, and then once we're on set, getting all the camera guys out, getting gear out, getting equipment out, getting challenges out. So how many boats do you have here in the Philippines for Survivor? On this location right now, we have about 30 boats. I'd say 15 are owned by us, and the other 15 are locally hired boats. Number nine. The art of this season is intriguing. I love how Tribal is designed, and as it turns out, the art for this season is not simply pulled from the Philippines, as you might have imagined. Instead, it is from a wider variety of cultures. They're kind of working on the whole region. We're taking some stuff from Malaysia, Burma, Thailand, a little bit of everything. So these are the best locals I think we've had. Really? Down. Yeah, they've got the huge movie industry here in Manila. And so there's a bunch of talented people. Number 10. Something I never really thought about, for Survivor at least, until I learned this next secret, is the aging and weathering process the art department utilizes to make things on the show look the way they do. Now I've directed a few short films, so I've definitely done this for stuff in my own films. However, I never thought about it, I guess, for Survivor. Because obviously in the show, they aren't using old bamboo as that would be unsafe, but they don't want new bamboo that would look out of place. So here's how they do it. You just uh, use the torch to dry out the bamboo and it gives that kind of burnt, mm -hmm. aged effect. And then she'll put a lacquer over it to give it that kind of shiny, glossy look. Oh wow, that changes it instantly. Number 11. Here we go. Jeff is going to say who his favorite player is this season. And frankly, he doesn't say it's his winner pick, but no one else on this cast has talked about as highly as this player. So I'm going to say that this is Jeff's unofficial winner pick and uh, it's not really a good one. I actually think Jeff could win this game. It wouldn't surprise me if he made it to the end and then made a really compelling argument. If Jeff Kent gets to the end and the guy next to him doesn't say, are you kidding me? 17 years of mid seven figures? That's all I gotta say to beat Jeff Kent. You know what pisses me off? Is I think I've made about $60 million playing baseball and I want this 
freaking million dollars in this game. And it's not even a million bucks. It's 600 grand by the time Obama takes it. Number 12. At what age would you consider someone old on Survivor? You could argue how someone behaves determines how old they seem to us, and I can agree with that. But if I had to pick an age, I would go with 40 as the line. 40 and above is old for Survivor, whereas 25 to 39 is probably the ideal age, and below 25 is young. That's just me, though. For Jeff, being old is a whole different bar for the ladies. Denise could do really well. A really good read on people. She's fit enough to get past the hump that I'm over 25, so I'm the older woman. Number 13. Sometimes people fall in love on Survivor. Sometimes they fall in love with someone from their season after the show is done. And sometimes they awkwardly propose to someone from another season at their reunion and uh, we all cringe. Either way, Survivor is more successful at relationships than The Bachelor, but for Carter, he says he will not be pursuing any women. Yeah, as far as relationships on Survivor go, it seems to me that the girl always comes out ahead. I think girls flashing their eyelashes at you is maybe, you know, sometimes a warning sign. Oh, I'm rooting for Carter to let his color bloom. Number 14, but uh, just because Carter ain't looking doesn't mean Roxy isn't. In fact, she has her eye on one guy and uh, she seems to be quite tempted by him despite having not spoken one word with him yet. I think one little like small thing is that there's, there's one guy that's just so good looking and I'm just praying he's not gonna be on my team because good looking people in a game where people are manipulating, that could be trouble. Literally, he looks like Prince Charming out of like a Disney movie. Number 15, Sarah may have been possibly the wildest contestant on this season. Her antics at camp and especially when she gets voted out have cemented a place in at least my mind, but I wonder how long she had been wanting Jeff like Julie Berry used to. As it turns out, before the game even began. Jeff Probst, dimples, survivor, all of it. I wanna put it on a plate and eat it. If I'm a flirt, I'm out off the island. I would vote Dawson out so fast because I have no idea what planet she's on. Number 16. I love this season's tribal council. I know I mentioned that earlier and I love how in past secrets videos we see how the local culture is implemented into tribal and how locals themselves contribute work that make it onto the season. That is not changed here and I'm glad. And here in the Philippines we used a lot of local labor and they, for instance, these lamps over here mm -hmm. were designed by Jesse Jensen, who's our production designer, yeah. but then built all by locals. And uh, same with the, the roof. There's about 4,000 tons of bamboo that, that had to be split, and then they made the roof out of it, all done by local labor. These big, gigantic planks here, which, wow. you know, you look at this and you think, ah, oh, it's just a wood floor, but if uh -huh. you look at the size of these planks and the length, they're actually pretty massive. It's, it has an Asian feel and that's something mm -hmm. different. And it's beautiful. And that's the point is we want people to come out here and feel like this culture exists. Number 17. How did the mastermind Zane get voted off first? Doesn't everyone know he should be the rifle winner of this season? Is this the biggest travesty in Survivor's long history? Probably not. But this secret scene shows more of Zane's personality while also showcasing why, if you don't already know him, he would need to be voted off first. I am Frankenstein. He, he, he was... The brain won't won't write, but he was sweet as he could be. In the town, people chased him and made him into the monster he was. He picked a little girl a flower, and then he it freaked him out and he yeah. choked her. See, so I kind of feel like that. Number 18. If Roxy really wanted to meet up with her man crush Pete, she needed to at least survive until the tribe swap, though that was hard to do on the infamous Matt Singh tribe. In this secret scene, we see Roxy not really doing as much work as the rest of the tribe would like her to do. And I must say that no matter how modern this game gets, this always seems to come up from time to time. We saw it in season one, and we saw it at least in season 37. So if you ever go on Survivor, just remember, do your fair share of work. I'm really afraid of of infections and I think one of the ways of really fighting off infections is washing your clothes. I'm obsessed with washing clothes and so I know everybody was kind of like, oh, I don't care. I got, even Russell was like, I want, I want my stuff to be dirty. We're only four days in and Roxy's sitting over there stirring up the clothes. It's almost a, a direct metaphor for apparently her take on the entire game. We have a day off, let me wake up, let me wash some clothes, and then I'll rest for the rest of the day. Number 19, what would you do for soft cheese? Not hard cheese, mind you, and definitely not a Klondike bar, but soft cheese. Take a moment and think about it while Sarah explains exactly what she would do just to have some. Any soft cheese, I, I will 
Do you like truffle cheese? Soft oh, cheese only. Hard cheese. You should well, treat that girl. Uh, <laughs> Number 20. Is it fair to say that Abby Maria is super memorable from this season, but Pete isn't? Well, he could have made his mark with this move he attempted in the secret scenes if it were successful. Oh, really? So you don't like me? Oh, yeah. like you a lot more if you gave me your own. Yeah, I know, exactly. I knew that you were trying to get to that. You'd be viewed, you'd be viewed as selfless. Come on, stupid. Don't even say that. You'd be, yeah, you'd be Everybody selfless. Everybody would be laughing You're at being you. selfish right now. No, I'm not. Come on. Yeah, yeah you are. No, I'm not. Don't even go there. Stop. You're trying to saying. work with the wrong person. I'm just saying. It's a very selfish move you're making. No, it's not. Yeah. You know that you're it looking isn't. looking out for number one. You should be looking out for number two. Oh. Number 21. Abby Maria is not subtle. I say this because she was not great at tricking others with how obvious she was in a lot of what she would do. However, there is a secret scene showing how when she pretended to find the hidden immunity idol, she actually fooled Penner. I went up the path looking for whatever the hell she was looking for. There's a fork in the road. I could go up the hill. I could take a right or I could take a left. I took a right, wasn't there. By the time I came back, she was already walking down. Just the wrong fork in the road, man. I hope it doesn't burn me. Number 22. It is episode 12 and Carter is about to be voted out and like most players, he makes his pitch for why this shouldn't happen. Now listening to it, I don't think the pitch is that good at all, but maybe I'm missing something because Lisa and Denise act like, whoa, Carter, that man, that stud, could sway a vegan to eat a steak. It's out of respect for this game, out of respect for my hard work, out of respect for my giving it my all in challenges. But if I could just ask that you keep me around one more time out of respect for me, I feel like I've played a game noble, respectful. I haven't bashed any of you guys. I haven't thrown anyone under the bus. Dangerous enough that a speech like that uh -huh. in the final three, uh -huh. that scared me as much as it's that's what I was about to say. That's, uh -huh. that's really like, and all of it's true yeah. too. So I mean that that you know, I don't want to. I wouldn't want to be in the final. He said three respect. With him. Number twenty three. If you are someone who is thin and lacks much fat, it would be ideal to throw on a few pounds before going on Survivor. That way, there's something for your body to burn when you are practically eating nothing for days on end while doing work and challenges. RC did this. She slapped on ten pounds to be exact before playing. But how much did she lose? I don't think I lost that much actually. I, I feel like I'm back. I put on. 10 pounds to come out. <laughs> so I think I'm just down to my normal size now. The scale was broken when I checked in with medical. <laughs> Cause there's no way I lost just five pounds in like two weeks, two and a half weeks. Number 24, some of us have wondered if RC would ever play again. Well, apparently her and her father were supposed to be on blood versus water, but her dad's health issues forced them to be replaced by John and Candace Cody. And then Jeff Probst tweeted out that he asked RC to play on season 31 and she declined, which is why considering what she says during season 25. Once you get voted off, all you want to do is go back. It sucks you in, you love it. Like, I love this game. I wanted to play it for 24 seasons. I, I can't believe I got to play it in number 25, you know. If they'd have me back, I'd come back again for 26. Number 25. Who could forget Jeff Kent infamously lamenting how if he won the million dollars, that'd only be 600,000 after Obama takes his cut of it. And no, I'm not gonna say anything else in his final words are nearly that memorable or good, but I did find it interesting who he said he would vote to win the entire game as soon as his torch was snuffed. You know, of, of anybody that I thought that may, you know, spark my interest and probably get my vote, at least as I sit right now until I listen to more of what's going on. Is, uh, is probably going to be Denise. Number 26. If this information was revealed on the show and I forgot, I apologize. You may recall how Jeff got injured on day one and hid it from his tribe mates to ensure he wasn't voted out because of it. However, what's new here is I had no idea about the extent of this injury. The doc checked me out and, and I had torn my MCL getting off the boat first day and I knew it and my leg was a wet noodle. Number 27. While I think Jeff did a much better job at hiding who he was from the others, unlike Gary Hogaboom, I mean uh, Gary Hawkins, he was spotted by Sarah who said nothing, which makes him thinking he went unnoticed all the more funny. Nobody ever knew I was a baseball player. Nobody picked up on it and I stayed away from talking a lot about sports. And Nobody picked up on the baseball thing, so I was able to stay away from the, he's already a millionaire, he doesn't need the money, or he's already a celebrity, he doesn't need to be on TV. 
So we never had those conversations. Number 28, Artis is a super fan. And this man has more will and determination to get on Survivor than a lot of us do. As he applied every single year to get on the show since it began. I was given the opportunity. I've tried this for almost 14 years now. It took me 14 years to get on the show. And I hope what it also shows everyone that if you keep at it, you know, you can accomplish anything. To keep at something for 14 years, that's saying something. That's when you really know you want to do something. Number 29 on Survivor, the players smell bad obviously but i always wondered how long it took for their noses to get used to the stench or if they just never got past it artists may be the only player i've ever heard actually talk about this i smelt myself and i knew i smelled bad and i couldn't stand that smell but then after day nine i was like I don't smell nothing anymore, <laughs> but you know you funky. Number 30, RC, RC, RC. Ponderosa this season gets a bit awkward at times, and this is due a lot to how RC reacts to certain players coming out of the game. For example, this time when Pete is voted out. Do you regret on day seven when I told you to fix our tribe and you told me no? What do you mean? When Abby blew up at me. And I turned to you and oh, I said, you, you have no, to fix you were, this. You were yelling at me. <laughs> if we were one big tribe and we all really got along, we all would We were there. one big tribe. And you said, I'm at the bottom. And then you went, and you were talking to the other tribe half the time during challenges. You were talking to Katie and we knew that. We knew that the second we merged. Carter told us. Yeah, quiet now, huh? A lot I want to say. Just wait. But I was trying to be nice. Like I did on the island. Number 31. And it doesn't stop with Pete. Oh no. RC is on a revenge tour and Artis is her next victim. But I will say that Artis does handle this the best out of everyone we will see. Are you asking for an apology from Artis? Is that what you need to move on? The combination of Penner coming out and sort of telling us both stuff and air things out, I think the combination certainly was helpful in, in just making Ponderosa, a much happier place for all. You rolled doubles. Oh, I did. So if I've had any small part in making this an easier place to for all of us to hang out, fantastic. Number 32. But the real rival of RC is next. Pete, artist, child play. RC really hates one person and one person only, Abby Maria. And if you watch the Ponderosa videos in order, there is a lot of setup to this. If Abby gets kicked out of the game at tribal, camp life at the Ponderosa is going to be explosive. It's like RC's just sitting there, chopping at the bit, just waiting for Abby to show up so that she can explode in the Abby. I will say that while I am not showing this entire storyline, it is pretty clear who is and is not handling this correctly. Hey, RC! I'm actually sorry. Hi, RC! Yeah, I wanna see me. He doesn't wanna say hi to me? Awkward. No, okay. That's no not, apology? We're I'm sorry, RC. I am so sorry. I'm so sorry that I hurt your feelings, and I mean it. Clarissa, are you ever gonna accept my apology? You're as nasty as the day is long. You are not a nice person. And quite honestly, you ask me if I hate you. I don't hate you. I pity you for the life that you live. You are quite honestly the most disgusting player to ever play this game. So, no. I told you not to talk to me the first night. I told you not to talk to me the second night. And you still continue to talk to me. I tried apologizing and you just don't want to accept my apology. Number 33. This next secret is a bit profound and that's not a joke. Now I'm not saying it's profound in a meaning of life kind of way, but more in a meaning of how to sway someone to understand your side of things or even to sway them to side with you. This is a very key skill, I think at least, to win Survivor and something I've never really been great at in life. Penner really explains this and honestly, I would take notes. And dealing with them. Um... Scoopin and Lisa, it took too long to figure out how what, what appeal to make to them. I should have known that as ministers, public speakers, parents, they would have their reputations in mind. But what I didn't realize was what the word means but what it meant to them number 34 would jonathan penner ever play again the better question is would he want to after all this time and the three failed attempts after he is voted out in season 25 the answer seems pretty certain from him you know what i learned i learned that i'm done with survivor i've had three shots now the target on my back was even bigger than i thought it was going to be and if i got the opportunity to come back for a fourth time I'm beaten up pretty bad, I gotta say. My, my ankles are shot, 
I got a busted toe, wore up my elbow, and the chances of actually winning now with a four-time player target on my back I just don't see it happen. Number 35. This next secret is a common trend I see whenever someone is voted out of the game. People do not care for Lisa. They don't care for how she's playing the game and they're just not big fans in general. Most of them do seem to like Denise though and I guess that explains the end result of the season pretty well. I gave my word to who what? I mean it was horrible and I'm literally just like oh my god. I couldn't lie to you and I couldn't, now listen, I appreciate, I guess, that she didn't blindside me, you know, because she's got no guts. Number 36. Ponderosa videos for a season can vary wildly on their entertainment value. Up at the top, you'll have a season like Token Chains. In the B tier, I would put David vs. Goliath. Micronesia is so raw since it was like their first time making them, but here, they're a bit boring. And I think it's because everyone seems to be antisocial. We see Jeff Kent laying in the pool all the time. Artis is playing card games by himself while listening to music, RC watches movies and is just being salty, and Pete just listens to music all the time. It's pretty lame. Like these these guys, they don't want to do anything. Like they don't want to do anything in the game and they really don't want to do anything in Ponderosa. So we like sit and don't talk to each other and like don't play games. Like that's what Ponderosa should be. It should be fun, but we're like the four boring <laughs> like Ponderosa jury members. Number 37. But who is the biggest wet blanket of this Ponderosa? Well, it ain't RC, despite what we saw from her before. Oh no. That title goes to Jeff Kent, who refuses to take any pictures with any of the other jurors Period. And Jeff will be in none of our pictures because he's not a happy participant to Lost immunity by what felt like inches. We'll understand that Malcolm was a threat and that he, sh he should be. Number 38. Malcolm is and was a super fan. If you couldn't tell by how he played on all of his seasons, he straight up says so in interviews as well. What is cool about this is how he explains the benefit this gave him when he played and how it really shaped his perspective and helped him make moves. You just kind of take a step back from it all and imagine you're on your couch watching it and what should people be doing. That was a great asset to me to have that uh, calm of mind sometimes. Yeah, being a fan definitely helped me out in a few very specific ways, but in a lot of general ways too, and really was a uh, large part of my success out here. Number 39. Clearly, Malcolm says this next thing before playing on Caramon, and probably before he was actually asked to go on, since the rumor mill says that he was asked immediately after Final Travel Council. But yeah, Malcolm, you should play again and again, please. That option was given to me to do it again. You, uh, Give me a week to eat some protein and uh, I'm good to go, is how I feel about it. Let me Give me another shot. Uh, going out on day 38, if anything, makes me want to do it again even more. Number 40. Could I sleep on Survivor knowing rats are crawling all over me? My instinct says no. I mean, I would do it, but uh, I wouldn't get much sleep. But I'm sure after a while, I'd probably get used to it. This problem has plagued players on the show since season one after all, but then when I hear Malcolm explain how they run across his chest, I go back to, uh, no, I don't think I'd get any sleep Ever. The past week I've been sleeping on the beach with rats. <laughs> Last night, literally, I had three rats run over my chest and it was just no big deal anymore. And now I'm gonna have blankets and pillow and uh, it's almost an unwelcome change, but I won't be complaining in the morning, <laughs> probably. Number 41, Carter, the man, the myth, and for those who are really in the know, the legend who may have done something crazy at a grocery store. Before Final Tribal, Carter knows what the people at home want and knows America will be waiting on his epic Final Tribal question with bated breath. They're the final three, yeah, they, one of them gets a million bucks, but uh, I really think America is tuning in to see me and my question. I kind of want to know what your thought was on when you found out I was going home. I just want to know what you have to say about that. Number 42. Remember Sarah kissing Jeff when she got voted out? I know I brought it up earlier, but I am reminding you so that now you can hear what exactly she was thinking when she went through with it. I was focused on the probes. <laughs> um, so I had my little, you know, fire stick and I'm walking over. And I said, as soon as I put it in the hole, my hands are free where I can grab him. <laughs> I don't even know if he said any words. I don't know if he even said the tribe has spoken. I just like kind of traveled through time. Everything froze. I traveled through time with my hands, got them around his body and just squeezed. And he had no choice but to hug me back, which is what I wanted. Number 43. How does the common man get on Survivor? Well, as you may or may not know, you fill out an application and send in a video to CBS's official website and pray to God that you get a call back. But if you are a celebrity, it's a little different. You just make it go viral. I went after it. I tried to, I had a friend of mine make a little iPhone video and put it on my 
Twitter account and ask people to retweet it and start a viral campaign to get me on the show. So this is something that I have wanted to do because I'm legitimately a super fan. Number 44. Malcolm says something in the pregame that is like an onion. It has layers. Thanks to Shrek for that comparison. But anyways, he says he knows how he will be perceived going into the game. So, and this is key. He says he will be leaning into that and taking advantage of that perception while secretly doing other things. Basically masquerading as who everyone thinks he is for as long as he can. I can't hide the fact that I'm a physical guy. I'm going to be I'm bigger than most of these guys. I'm in better shape. No reason to try to hide that. But the mental side, the strategy side is definitely going to be toned down. Down. It's going to be the Fabio approach for the first few weeks, just so I don't get perceived as a strategic threat. There's no reason to put a bigger target on my back. Come post-merge, it's going to be a little bit of a game changer. This is the perception dilemma I talked about in my video called The Perception Dilemma. Links in the description. Don't try to convince everyone to think something different about you. People like thinking that they know you and that you're going to be predictable. So let them think that while you take advantage of its pros and cons. Number 45. This last secret is just sweet. As Denise and Brandon, a guy with autism, connect over Facebook and she became his friend and ends up making a real difference in his life by not only becoming friends, as I just mentioned, but teaming up at Reality Rally to raise money for cancer, something his dad had just recently passed away from. When Denise came out, I was like, oh my gosh, it's her. So which secret blew your mind the most? Comment below and let me know. Thanks for watching, and if you like the content you see here, then please consider supporting me and this channel on Patreon. Your financial support makes this channel possible, so thank you and thank you for watching.